Hello everyone, my name is JRoy, and today I want to show a storage project that's been uh, in development for quite some time now, developed by uh, mainly me and Mooney, but we've had a lot of help through uh, the development and uh, really proud to show it off finally. So just briefly going over the features here, um, the basic concept is we have a multi-item sorting chest at the top. This one is a absolutely empty but you can assign multiple different item types to these chests um so they're kind of like categories but the new feature is kind of like the grand mis if you've seen it before we have box loading in the floor and in fact a very special type of box loader in the floor um so um we'll get into why this is such a nice change to what has been traditionally done and the final thing I want to show is that this is one unit. Obviously, these are each different versions included in the world download. And um, this is absolutely tiny for what it does. So let's get right into it. All right, we're well, walking right in here. This is the first automated storage system I ever built in Minecraft. It is the Categorizer by Mizuma Games. It's the original one. And uh, it uh, doesn't even work anymore, unfortunately. But just going through the items and whatnot uh yeah it's pretty uh pretty nostalgic for me to be back here but we always had one issue so the cobble here was a good example but if i can remember where the natural blocks were you can see that we have a lot of one item type filling up these chests and in fact we had to remember um over in our melon and pumpkin farm we could fill all those chests with melon and pumpkins quite easily. Um, and unfortunately, we really just didn't have space for them because we had to fit all of these other items in as well. And this kind of always gave the need that even in a very simple system like this, being able to pack your items into shulker boxes is a very useful feature. Unfortunately, this problem of packing items into boxes is actually not as simple as just slapping box loaders onto a storage. While a system like this would work, if we don't have a full shulker box of items, all the items are inaccessible to the player. You can see here that there's no way we're getting inside of this box. And we can simplify this issue by using an accessible loader, but this then takes up a lot of wall space. So both of these items don't quite fit the bill of what we're looking for. Introduce the hybrid loader. This box loading system uh, is pretty perfect for our needs. So if we go ahead and follow the hopper chain down from the filter here, we can see that we pretty quickly start loading the shulker box, but we immediately pull items out of the shulker box and fill up a double chest here. And so you can imagine that if I put in a stack of items, it'll make its way down here into the chest. In fact, we can watch it happen. Go ahead and just put a stack of items in. We should see them get loaded here first. And in fact, this entire double chest and hopper have to fill up completely before we start loading the box. And then we detect when the box is full based on its overflow and collect full boxes here. So with this technology, we actually have all of the components we need to make a full storage system. So coming in here, we can see that we have MIS sections down here and our hybrid loaders up top. So here you can see we have a full shulker box of redstone dust because we filled up a full double chest. This gives us also access to loose items and box items very easily. However, if I take a look at this system on the outside, there's a fundamental issue. You see, multi-item sorters tend to point down, which in combination with the fact that our box loaders also point down, one of them has to come back up to get them in the same hall. And I've solved this issue here by using these massive dropper lines, which have to be tiled AB on every slice in order to push the MIS items back up so that we can actually have them here in the hall. And while this system works fine, and it's not as noisy as you might think it would be, this isn't reasonable to build in survival. It's massive and uh, quite laggy, unfortunately, because that's a lot of droppers. This is where the tech of our bestie Mooney comes in, because Mooney, through his infinite genius, was able to find uh, most of the wiring for 
an in the floor hybrid loader. And in fact, I was just able to modify it for the system, but he did most of the work and heavy lifting. And truthfully, the system wouldn't exist in any way without him. This system essentially, again, we have our filter, which we go ahead and if we follow the items down, well, actually, instead of going right into the box, they're first gonna get sucked into this hopper and fill up this chest. And then when that gets full, then we push items into the box. And in fact, this does have a slight downside where if we empty this chest, we could have items in the box here that are inaccessible to the player. So we've implemented a call feature to be able to call the box to you regardless of its fill level. So in practice, it means that this system is able to present full boxes to the player while making every item accessible, all in an absolutely teeny space. So actually looking at the slice here, we can see we have filters here. Um, these are maybe a little different to filters you've seen before. They're what we call AB tileable, so um, each one doesn't affect the other, and it means that we can have less buffer items here. You need uh, two buffer items um, instead of you know having 41. So again, making more of our actual items accessible to the player. And, uh, you know, of course we fill up this double chest here, and then eventually the items get loaded into boxes. When we get enough of a backlog that we can read items from this barrel, we go ahead and break the box and replace it with another empty one. And the box gets sent through these dropper lines up here. In the event that this chest is actually full, um, obviously the item would stay in this dropper and then get sucked out from the hopper. And that is how we have overflow box collection, which is a really nice feature. And you're probably wondering now why the top looks different too, and not the uh, sort of colorful mess over there. This is also thanks to our friend Mooney. Um, this is his Mooney item sorter, as we call it, or uh, you know, it's really called the, the multi-item sorter V5. What it essentially does is take the same mechanics pretty much as the um, old multi-item sorter, but just make it so much easier to build. This is so clean in comparison, and uh, this is something that isn't a nightmare to build in survival like the old one, but this is very reasonable for anyone to do. Um, and obviously um, we have two slices here, and then um, their output just gets sent directly into these three double chests here. Um, and of course we also have overflow protection via this hopper line here. So. Yeah, that's how we have um, a really clean system and a really nice slice here that um, is both easy to build, versatile, and um, offers great UI. So we're really maximizing on everything you could want. So now that we know how the system works, let's go ahead and take the tour of the build I have here. So we walk into the system, we'll see the input right here, and we can put loose items, shulker boxes, any items here, really except TNT items I wouldn't trust, but it's about it. Um, and we can put them in here and then they will just get sorted into the system. These lights will turn on when that's happening. And we can pause the system at any time um, because I know a lot of people will build these in single player worlds. I'm just gonna go ahead and wanna pause this, wait a few seconds and then log out so you don't break the system. Over to our right here, we have some box displays. I'm just going to go ahead and put in a random box in my inventory in one of these. Um, this button here will trigger a global box placement. And if we empty one of these out, you can see it'll replace itself with the next full box. So pretty nice there. And these are just intended for items you tend to grab a lot, like food and rockets. I have totems here. They could really be whatever you want. Pretty straightforward. These barrels aren't part of the system, but they might be nice to just store some tools and stuff you don't want to keep in the actual system here. Um, over here we have our unsorted, unstackables, I call it the exception side. So in the first slot we have overflow, so this is where overflow boxes are sent, and uh, overflow multi-item sorter items. Then we have potions are separated out because they're really easy to separate out, so why not just do it? Next we have unsorted items, so these are items that don't match um, the multi-item sorter set. So, for example, you probably don't want to have netherite in there. So netherite would get sorted here. Here we just have unstackables. Um, so anything, any you know, any of your tools and whatnot, they would get sorted here. 
Um, and then finally, just empty boxes would be sent to this last row here. Turning around, I just put in some furnaces here to fill up the space. Uh, might be useful. Uh, you could obviously replace this with, with whatever you like. And then moving on to the actual system here, of course, we have from bottom to top, full box, a uh, uh, single double chest for full boxes of an item type. Um, uh, double chest for loose items. And uh, up top is the MIS. So again, just to be clear here, um, in case you haven't picked up by now, this isn't slot allocation. Um, you, the items can be in any order here, just as long as they fit the category above. Yeah. We run down to the end of the hall. This is our empty box storage. So of course, the uh, boxes, um, the box loaders run on empty boxes. We have to give it a, a healthy supply of them. And so as this empties, it will slowly drain the signal down. Um, so you can always check, oh, if all these are out, it's not going to break the system or anything, but you do need to put some in uh, as, as soon as you, you, you can. Um, uh, there's a plenty of buffer of boxes, but you know, it, it's good to maintain everything correctly. I've included some crafting tables over here. There's, these water log blocks are inner chests and furnaces and stone cutters in the floor here because you always want to be able to grab them quickly. But you may wonder what all this is. Um, and this is a box holder, so I can go ahead and demo it here. It's really common in our system that um, what we're doing a lot is grabbing items out of our storage system and putting them into shulker boxes and then breaking the box, running down here, doing the same thing. Um, and these little floor holders basically optimize that. So when we throw them a box, they will place them in the floor for us. And the water is for TNT protection. So if you throw TNT in here, uh, it'll do some damage to you, but the build should be fine. And then here we can just grab items from our chest, load them in, and break them quite quickly. And uh, that way we just don't have to be swinging our pickaxe around trying to break the boxes and accidentally break any of the, any of the build. Alrighty, well I hope that gets you uh, some interest in the system, and if you are interested in building it, um, go ahead and explain now. So the main mod you're going to want to use to build this is Lightmatica, although you could build it in vanilla if you really wanted to. Um, I've gone ahead and set it up uh, each of the builds here so that they could be easily combined with Lightmatica. So if you like my decoration, but you want to assign your own items, just go ahead and uh, use this build here. So this keeps the decoration, but doesn't have any of the sort of allocation of which items go where. And then you would of course need to um, configure these chests as such. Um, I'll get into how to do that a little later. And then um, just put in the filter items here as well as the indicator blocks uh, accordingly. But if you do like my decoration and you like my sort of item assignment, um, you could just go ahead and copy this one for one. So this has a fairly logical layout of items. In fact, I've even left uh, the two new cherry wood and bamboo item or wood types their own slot here. So it should be pretty easy to just copy this in with Lightmatica. I even have the corner blocks placed so you can take your own schematic really easily. And yeah, should be pretty straightforward. But uh, I'm, I know a lot of people are going to want to do their own decoration, so I've gone ahead and also added a schematic of um, the build here. Um, so this is just all the machinery. These gray carpets and concretes are blocks you'll probably want to chase because or change because they're visible. And uh, yeah, so this is kind of cool also to see you know all the mechanics and how everything works. But yeah, so you could just build this and then paste in your own. Um, decoration whatever you really want to do but you will also need to take one of these schematics so if you again want to keep my item assignment it's a pretty simple layout um you can copy this schematic and paste it in and just line it up with the same blue and yellow uh glass or you need to paste this one in which everything here is unassigned and um yeah so you'd want to paste this one in over that and just manually assign them yourself one final trick with the assignment is um, the MIS snakes the items through, so they come in here, snake that way, snake this way, and back and forth like that. And wherever the chest is, the items end up in the um, slot next to it, or slice next to it. Um, so for example, here we have these chests labeled as spruce, um, so these items are going to get sent to this slice and our oak items are actually stored here 
and they'll get sent to the first slice because again, on this half, the MIS sort of points this way. Um, so it's a little tricky, but it's not too bad. And then the item filters here, you probably just want to copy whatever blocks you have as indicator blocks. Um, but yeah, that's really it. Um, pretty easy to build, but I know also some of you are going to want to expand it or maybe even um, make it smaller. Um, so the last thing you can do is um, I, I left the slice here in case you want to configure it yourself um, and want to, you know, build up your own system just using the slice, but do everything else from scratch. So I've just left the slice here, or maybe you just want to study it, um, but I do have a few more notes. Um, so one of the downsides with the system um, is the empty box collection from our unloader here isn't very reliable. Um, the dropper can spit items and then get stuck here and here. It's not hard to modify around it, but it does take up a little more space. Um, obviously, if you're building this system, you probably need a shulker farm. But if you don't have that and you uh, you know are really tight for shulker boxes, I would just expand this water stream um, to basically just go around and end up rejoining back here or something. Um, really can't go too wrong with it. Um, and then the other thing to keep in mind is the slice is not truly tileable um, because we do hard power some droppers. So if you end up needing to uh, or trying to parallelize the, the system, so if you're trying to unload multiple of um, the uh, box type items at the same time, um, that actually can break the system and cause boxes to get stuck in the dropper line. Um, so I don't really recommend doing it. It's pretty unlikely, um, but yeah, if you are trying to parallelize the system, you probably are interested in upgrading to a bigger system anyway. Um, and then one final note is the actual droppers here that need to be filled up with boxes. Um, you do want to go ahead and pre-fill these. Um, it doesn't actually matter in all directions, but we found that directionally, um, some directions would need pre-fillings, others wouldn't. Um, but I recommend just being safe, and even though it's kind of a pain, just go ahead and fill all these up with empty boxes. And um, if uh, you know if that's kind of a pain, and I know it kind of is, but uh, you'll thank yourself later because it actually won't need a refill on boxes for a very long time. Um, so you'll you'll thank yourself in the end by doing that, and also your system will work. <laughs> And finally, I know uh, some of the common questions are going to be, does this work on paper? Um, I don't have time to test on every server config if this works. Um, it should work on paper. The MIS most likely will. But um, if you're concerned about it, I would just build up one slice like this, test every component deeply, and then you should be able to see um, if it'll work on a paper server or not by then. But if you're asking if this will work on like fabric or vanilla, obviously those are fine. Um, it's just when you get to paper and spigot when, uh, you know, you kind of have to wonder um, if the redstone changes will actually change stuff here. Um, but yeah, that should be everything you need to know for how to build the system. Again, for most of you, it'll just be, you know, loading a schematica and placing it. It doesn't need chunk alignment. Um, it's non-directional. So yeah, can't really go too wrong with it. Alrighty, thank you so much for watching. I do want to give a shout out to everyone who worked on this project. You can see they're all credited here in the world download. But obviously the main one is Mooney because this system just wouldn't be possible without him. And his uh, actually at the time kind of controversial opinions about hybrid loading, which ended up to, um, you know, they were ignored by him and they allowed for a really incredible system to be built here. Um, but obviously we took a lot of inspiration from Gangles and, um, you know, Phil Goodenator did a lot of the testing and, you know, this system just wouldn't be possible without so many people. So, um, you know, shout outs to everyone. I'll leave a link to the GMIS or the Grand MIS in the description. But uh, thank you for watching. And uh, if you're interested, I hope you have a great time with it. You can always message me on Discord if you have any issues. And yeah, take care.